Nocturne number 14 in F minor is the last nocturne in book two. This particular nocturne is a little more introspective, pensive in quality, partly due to the key and, and partly due to the very thoughtful, uh, serious melodic line. Even though visually this nocturne doesn't look as difficult as some of the other ones with the lot not the 16th notes, I think it's, it's perhaps one of the most difficult ones, musically speaking, in the book, which is why uh, I put it last in this particular volume. We have something that's very, very important to think about I always talk about playing uh, and using matching tones in lyrical pieces like this. So we have to really, really play with our ears and listen to different gradations of sound as they die away. In the opening of this piece, we have a long half note that's tied over to an eighth note, followed by a little series of triplets. It doesn't go very fast, so by the time we get to that third beat, we really have to match the volume way down so that the uh, triplets don't start with an accent. Let me just show you what I mean. If I don't think about that, it's gonna sound like this. And if we accent that first note of the triplet, it's going to really wreck that beautiful, long, gorgeous line. So all the way through this nocturne, that's something that needs to be thought about so carefully by the performer. The middle section here, um, let me start right before major 17. We have a de Ciso in the right hand. So I want this to sound very convincing with real authority. This needs to move forward, keeping those triplet patterns in the left hand, always kind of moving over the bar line. Be sure it doesn't get too slow. It's very chromatic, very, very interesting, but it needs to maintain that nice, beautiful, uh, even forward tempo. There is a spot on the last page of this piece in measure 33, where we have a rapid descending uh, scale in uneven groups, a group of five, a group of six, in 30 second notes. So uh, just make sure that that's, it's good fingering and a really nice, beautiful clarity, followed by then a much softer sound with another trill, followed by a turn. Now, these are all so Chopin-esque uh, in, in nature. Let me start in measure 35. Now we have double thirds in the right hand, the same melody, but just harmonized with thirds. Mm -hmm. 